Welcome. Welcome, everyone, all my teammates here at the church and all of you out on the World Wide Web. Here at St. Matthew's, we are a Christ-centered family of grace where all are wanted. We are committed to becoming who Christ says we are, growing, living, and sharing God's love, one relationship at a time. Now let's listen to Wendy as we get our hearts prepared for worship. Will you please join me in the opening prayer? And we're going to pray out of Psalms 57, 9 through 11. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you among the nations. We sing of you among the peoples. Your love is great, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. We exalt you, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. And we just give you this morning our worship service. And we just pray for all the hearts and minds that are out there listening right now or who will listen at some point over the internet waves. We give you our song. We give you our messages. And we love you so much and thank you and praise you for being our God. And thank you for St. Matthew. In your name we pray. Amen. Now if you will please join the worship team in the song that they're bringing to us this morning. Worthy of every song you could ever sing Worthy of every praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe 
we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh, live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. to do, build our lives around that firm foundation. We do have some announcements this morning. First of all, please know that if you're listening now and you have a prayer request, you can send it in on the chat on Facebook. You are welcome to email us a request. You can call the church office during the church hours, which are 9 to 1, Monday through Thursday, or you can email it to Elisa. There's always a way to reach us if you've got a prayer request. And we, we have our prayer warriors that are praying every day. Um, also want everybody to know about the uh, Celebration of Life service for Billy Pierce that's planned for next Saturday, uh, January 9th, around 2 o'clock. We'll, we will give you more information about it. But because of these times and because we want to keep everybody safe, um, the family has asked that it will be family only in the service, and they are being very careful about how they're seated and wearing masks and all of that. And then all of us that are brothers and sisters of Billy from here at St. Matthew or any other family and friends that are um, not here or can't be here, uh, we're going to do a Facebook Live service so that all of us can also honor Billy and Marlene and, and be somewhat a part of that. So you'll be getting some details about that. It'll be just like the Sunday morning service where it will come on live and you can participate in that. 
Um, if you are interested, we have some great things on our YouTube channel. If you just go to YouTube, while YouTube, and type in SMUMC Lubbock, then you can find all of the, the, the sermons, uh, the services that uh, from the past, and some additional things that are really pretty fun. So if you need a boost at some time, at some point, that's a great place to look. It is Communion Sunday. So if you need to grab your pretzels or chips or whatever and your coffee and juice or soda so that you'll be ready for Communion Sunday, if you're doing it at your house, we just want you to have a little warning about that. Remember, though, from 1130 to 12, that the pastor will be outside and he'll be happy to administer the um, elements to you. We've got a special little cup and cracker. And also we have um, he'll pray over you if you want to be part of that. You just drive up in the parking lot and he'll be masked up and meet you there. If you are wanting to read the Bible in a year, the pastor has sent out an email to us and it's a thematic approach, so it's it's really pretty cool. And in the email it talks about how it's 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 progress, not perfection. And I like this, it says it's not how much we get into the Bible, but how much it gets into us. So even if you are a little behind, you start now, whatever, or if you start in, at, at, in February, it's still great to get that much of the Bible read. As far as our activities this week are concerned, we have Transformers uh, Monday night at 7 o'clock. Of course, that's on Zoom. Uh, Advent Mission, uh, celebrating Epiphany, which is the celebrating the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. That's Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Even if you've never been to one of those, it is really so cool to learn new things about the Christian history and about our faith. So feel free to come on in and join us. Wednesday, Brown Bags and Bibles from 12 to 1. And then Saturday night, the uh, Reality Praise and Teaching is played at 7.30. We do have our ongoing ministries, and we want you to continue to pray for those. If at some point you want to walk around at Aspen or walk around the block at Wester and you want somebody to do a prayer walk with you, please call me. I'll be happy to walk and pray with you. Wester, of course, their teachers will be starting back tomorrow and their students this week, so we want to be in prayer for those teachers and those administrators that they have a great um, start to this year. Uh, Aspen Village, we know that... There are um, all kinds of situations because there are families over there. And so uh, we know that the um, rent thing has been uh, extended, but we also want to pray for all those families that are unemployed or aren't working. Our women's group has decided this month to give a little money to Salvation Army. Um, I think a lot of us are recovering from all the Christmas presents that we, that we bought, but if you are wanting to look at doing something, that's what that group has decided to do. There's some information up there about the APLOS online giving. If you uh, want to find a way, you can always mail something to the church, but if you would like to give in that way, you certainly can do that. And we have some birthdays to celebrate this week. Uh, tomorrow is Nell Colson's birthday, and then uh, Tuesday will be Nikki Crow's, and Friday will be Stephanie Wilson's and Bethany's birthday. So we want to wish all of those folks a happy birthday. Now, if you will please join Carol in our hymn of praise. Our hymn of praise this morning is number 117, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, verses 1, 2, and 6. Affirmation of Faith, number 881, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of inspiration this morning is number 698, God of the Ages, verses 1, 2, and 4. time for us to um, join together, just God's people in prayer. I do want to uh, announce that I got a a text that Billy service will be at 1 o'clock next Saturday. That's January 9th at 1 o'clock. We have some prayer requests that I know of that I'm lifting up on our behalf, and then I'm going to give a little bit of quiet time so anybody that wants to can lift up the requests that you know of, and then we'll end together by saying the Lord's Prayer. So please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you are and all of the love that you show us, you've given us. We thank you for your Son. We recognize that you are the mighty and powerful God who is a ruler over everything, that just your words spoke all of this into being. And we just bring our community to you this morning. We ask that you take care of all of those who've been infected with COVID. And we lift up our health care workers, anybody connected with dealing with those that are ill, up to you. And we especially lift up those that we know that are related to us and just pray that we'll know what to do to care for them and ask your protection over them. We lift up Dale Milhauser and pray that you will help her in her treatment And we lift up Fallon King as as she is adjusting to the treatment over her heart. And she's just a young lady. And we pray that you will will help her through this time and help her family through this time. We pray for Tam's family and the Gamels and just pray for uh, peace and serenity and, and joy at this time. And pray that they will be able to get the rest that they need. We lift up all the, the Pierce family, all the nieces and nephews. We lift up Marlene, and we just put them in your hands and pray that this will be a week of celebration and joy, even in the middle of the grief, and we pray that you will carry them through this time. We ask that you will dissolve Phil's blood clot, and um, as he goes to the doctor soon, that there will just be really excellent results there and that uh, it'll be a great testimony to his doctor what's happened in his body. 
We lift up those that are suffering from depression at this time and and just pray for safety in our community that although we know the vaccine is here and we're close to the end, we just pray that you would help us to still be safe and take care of ourselves and, and make sure that we are not putting ourselves in any dangerous situations. And as our schools start back this week, Wester and all of us that are involved in um, teaching in the schools where we are, we just ask blessings over those children and ask that um, those among us that are teachers and administrators, that you would give us the energy and the wisdom and the insight we need to do a good job with those children. And now we just lay before you our private requests. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Good morning. Good to have all of you with us today. Um, I just want to, just a couple of things real quick. Uh, um, how about Ohio State? <laughs> I don't know if there's any football team players out there, but uh, that was my pick, just so y'all know. If you want something else to be praying for, the Ohio State football team, right? So as they go to the national championship against Alabama, um, I don't know if they can win that one, but... That's what I'm also rooting for. And I also want to tell you, I'm just so glad the way you guys are giving and have closed out the year with us. And thank you so much for all that you did in 2020. Uh, and I'm, I'm having a hard time transferring 2020 to 2021. Uh, we were in our praise and worship uh, rehearsal yesterday. And a great point was brought up just to sit and reflect for a moment over uh, all that we've accomplished and the Lord has enabled us to do uh, this year. And I just personally want to tell the praise team and worship guys, video, digital, sound, all of that, thank you very much. You know, we have been at this now since the mid middle of March, and so none of it would have been possible, you know, without you guys doing what you do and so thank you uh, very much and because of that we've made lots of new friends out on the internet you know and so people from all over so that's absolutely exciting I'm pumped about that my point being God's blessings just never seem to end amen church I mean it just keeps pouring on us and pouring on us and though sometimes our circumstances may not be ideal and, and it may be hard and uh, the road may be a little bit rocky or the incline is maybe we think too much, you know, still he is with us and he blesses us. And so I just want to tell you, thank you for turning that blessing that he has given you into a blessing for other people. And we're going to pray about that right now, about the blessings that God gives us whether it be gifts, our tithes, our, our spiritual gifts, the, 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 our interaction with other people. Uh, Lord, we just want to give all of that up to you, Father. And so thank you guys for that. So let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord, and we do pray your blessings upon the gifts uh, that you have given us in such a way, Lord, that we give that out freely to other people, whether it be from our tithes or uh, our spiritual gifts, uh, Lord, and in, in the ways that you have made us. Uh, Father, all of those things are blessings, and you have blessed us with the greatest blessing of all. The same blessing that you gave Abraham, God, you give us, that we are a blessing to be a blessing to other people, Father. And so it's with that that we do want your blessing on every uh, penny uh, and every dime that is uh, collected and taken here, Lord, whether it be given online or whether people bring it by or they mail it in or they drop it off, Lord. Uh, every single sin of that, Lord, we want that translated into your kingdom work, Father. And so, uh, and we want to be about your kingdom work, God. And so as we journey with you, Father, 
uh, Lord, as we look around and we see need, Father, give us uh, inspiration and ability, Father, and, and give us exactly what we need to do, what you want us to do in this world. Thank you for being so faithful to us, God. Thank you for always loving us and caring uh, for us, Father, and doing it in such a way that we just have to share it. We just have to share it, Lord. And so uh, we love you, and we lift this up to you today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I did want, before we get started today, I did want to um, just uh, a couple of things. If you, <laughs> I'm, I didn't do my Bible reading today, so I'm going to do that right after church today, you know. But if you are participating in that, way to go, guys. Love you. Jump in at any time. If you bail out and come back in, that's fine, too, you know. Uh, I know that life gets crazy for us sometimes. Um, also, do want to be uh, 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 praying for Marlene and her family right now, and we love you guys very much, Marlene. And so, and also for Tam uh, Gamel and her family as well, uh, Lord, uh, Tam is still not feeling well, and so uh, we're just lifting them up to you right now as well, Father. So we just we just want to be in prayer for that this week. Uh, as we go through this. Our scripture today comes from John chapter 17, and it's verses 1 through 5. And what I'm doing is I'm reading from the New Living Translation this morning. And so remember now, this we're looking at John chapter 17 uh, most of this month. And so if you haven't had a chance to read that entire chapter, uh, then I want to encourage you to do so. It's a great prayer that Jesus offers for those uh, that, are, that are following him. Um, and so uh, let me just read in verse 17 and in verse 1 for 5 of chapter 17. After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you, each, uh, for you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life, each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. And may God add his richest blessings to the reading of his word this morning. Now, as we close out this Christmas season, this Sunday, uh, or um, the 12 days of Christmas, as, as some of you know it, um, um, uh, coming this Wednesday, Epiphany begins. And, and remember, we combined Advent and Christmas into the lead of Epiphany all together into one stream where we're celebrating not only the fact that Christ came and we celebrated his birth just a few days ago, but also in remembering that he is coming again. So as we move from Christ coming to the world uh, into the manifestation of Christ into this world, we have to ask ourselves this question, and this is what we're looking at uh, this month. What now? Now, manifestation, that's a big word, <laughs> I know. And so, uh, and, and all it really means is a very simple meaning. It just means something theoretical that's uh, made real. And in the spiritual sense, uh, then for us, it means something spiritual that becomes real. And that is exactly what happened to the manifestation of Christ, of God in this world. They had been hearing about it for centuries, that it was going to happen. And guess what? Epiphany is the celebration of the manifestation that was demonstrated by the recognition of the Magi, who, by the way, were not Jews. And so it wasn't just being offered to one set of people. Christ came and poured himself out now. That reality is happening at that time and so to all people not just to a certain crew and guess what that reality is still true today the manifestation of Christ in our world so let's go ahead and jump in now last week we began this new series what now and I love it and it's examining the question since Jesus came and since Christmas happened since Christ is also coming again right what now is the question so to do this, we're really taking an interesting approach because we're skipping way ahead in the life and ministry of Christ to John chapter 17, where we see Jesus praying this absolutely incredible prayer, guys, uh, for his followers that they would be in the world, but not of the world. 
that they would be in the world, but not of the world. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, let's look at last week. We looked at the L words last week, if y'all remember, where we affirmed the fact that because Christmas happened, we have a new leader, that's one L word. We live under a new fulfilled law, that's another L word, and we speak a new language, the third L word, the language of love. And today we're going to add to that list, because Christmas happened, we see that we have a loving father we see that we have a loving family and we see that we have now a loving home well let, let me explain let me explain that a little bit in chapter uh in the entire chapter of john 17 it records this prayer of jesus right and so and it's a prayer that he prayed on the night that he would be betrayed and arrested so if we look at verse one it says this after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Now, John really doesn't tell us a lot about the emotion that Jesus was feeling in that moment as he prays that prayer. But guess what? The Gospel of Matthew gives a really good account and a lot more details surrounding how Jesus probably did feel during that moment. So before we really study the words of John chapter 17 and continue unpacking this prayer for now and the rest of this month, let's just take a few minutes right here to better understand that emotion that Jesus had that night by briefly looking at Matthew chapter 26. So if you can, turn over in your Bibles to Matthew uh, chapter 26, and we're going to start in verse uh, 36. Now remember, again, this is a different gospel, I know, but this is all happening at the, at the same time on the same night. And Matthew 26 helps us understand just a little bit more the emotion that Jesus had. So verse 36 of that chapter says this. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter, and he took Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. Listen to the language here. He told them, now this is, this is really hitting it, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, and he began to pray. So in the final night of his life, we learn from Jesus something very, very true and important for us today. We learn how to pray when we feel absolutely overwhelmed. See, in Matthew 26, he says that great line, he says that his soul is crushed to the point of death. And, and so what he's describing here, the way that I read that is, is that that is describing absolute despair absolute despair now <laughs> that may sound a little strange right when you hear jesus describe himself as feeling that way let me ask you um what does that do to you personally i think that that makes some of us very very uncomfortable because we have this idea in our minds that christians aren't really supposed to feel that way at all in fact, the Christian advice that some people probably would have given Jesus in that exact moment would have been, hey, Jesus, don't feel that way, right? Cheer up. You shouldn't feel like that. And, and, and see, I think, I think the reason why is, is some of us grew up learning, you know, that the Christian thing to do or the spiritual way to act when you feel overwhelmed is to smile and pretend that everything is okay. And if the devil doesn't like it, right? He, what was that song? He can sit on attack. He can sit on attack. But, but here we have Jesus, and he is completely raw, and he is vulnerable, and he is overwhelmed as he faces a really difficult future. Hmm. What a strange year for us as a nation, right, guys? And look, it doesn't matter what side of the election that you were on or what views or opinions that you hold about this pandemic. 
it's all really easy to feel overwhelmed. And you know what? Most of this last year has felt a little bit that way for a lot of us. Lots of uncertainty. And, you know, if you're like me, you're probably a little bit tired and, and at times maybe a little bit scared with all the divisive rhetoric that we hear and, and the doomsday, doomsday predictions that we read about. And, you know, it's, it's not that we haven't tried to keep things light and in the moment, right, with uh, humor and our, our memes of good riddance to 2020. But, you know, 2020 just ended, guys, and it doesn't feel like January 1st of 2021 suddenly and just instantly shifted us towards lots of comfort and lots of certainty. And there is just this part of us, I think, that when we feel absolutely overwhelmed and anxious that we want to hear somebody say, hey, everything's good. If you're overwhelmed and worried, you don't have to feel that way. But look, here's the truth. From what we just read, Jesus shows us that sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is that we can be honest about how we feel and cry out to God in prayer. Amen? I mean, see, feeling overwhelmed with emotion, guys, it doesn't make you any less Christian. It doesn't make you any less spiritual. You know what it makes you like? It makes you like Jesus on this night in his life that we just read about. Now, it's important, I think, that some of us really hear that this morning because maybe you grew up in a home or, or you grew up, uh, you know, in a church, maybe where those types of feelings just weren't allowed and were actually probably encouraged to be avoided. And, and somehow you gained this understanding that it's wrong, or I've even heard it spoken, that it's sinful to feel sad or to feel ang anxious or to feel angry or to feel upset. And so maybe some of us got really used to avoiding or suppressing those kinds of feelings where it just seemed like the Christian thing to do was just always have that smile on your face and the everything's great, ding, right demeanor but but jesus shows us this incredible truth right here church we don't have to play the game we don't when we feel sad or when we feel anxious or or upset or angry we can take those exact things to god in prayer we don't have to play like everything is okay with him. Guys, th there is just, look, so many times uh, in my life when I ne didn't really understand why I did what I did. And I think for us, there are so many times in our lives when sometimes we just don't understand why we do the things that we do. And you know what? When it gets like that, really, all that I was trying to do and all that most of us are trying to do is that we're just trying to deal with unwanted emotions. And really what we want is we just want to feel better. We hate feeling lonely. We hate feeling powerless. We hate feeling out of control. We hate feeling vulnerable. We hate feeling afraid. We hate feeling hurt. We hate feeling sad. So even though, too, that we said we were never going to again, what do we do? Well, we, you know, plow a gallon of Bluebell ice cream with a really large spoon right out of the carton, or we go on an online shopping spree, or we turn to pornography, or, or we, we jump from relationship to relationship, or we, we turn to alcohol, or we go back to raging. Even though we promised ourselves a million times, I'm not ever going to blank again well we try to find some way to numb what we're going through and and though it may work for a minute those fixes are not lasting especially during 
this season that we're in where it just feels like things are coming at us constantly one right after another. When it feels like it's just not the stuff that's going on in our personal lives, but guess what else? Everything else going on around us as well. Now look, one very common way that we try to handle all that emotional weight is what therapists would call transference. Y'all know I was a psychology major, so I just got to throw that in a little bit, right? Transference is where, you know, you take unwanted emotions and these not-so-good feelings and you transfer them onto someone that's around you. We take emotions that maybe we feel towards a certain person or a certain circumstance or situation and we probably unconsciously direct those towards someone else and not just someone else but oftentimes and most of the time someone who is safe to us. And I think a lot of us have found ourselves at this point, at some point during this season. Now look, you know, there, there really is a lot at play right now in our world, with our loved ones, in our homes, in our relationships. I mean, it's been an unusual year. We've never done this before. Lots of first times, you know, over the last few months. We've experienced maybe lots of anger and lots of anxiety, fears, our share of frustrations, and, and we've taken those out on friends, and we've taken those out on our family. So what Jesus does for us in John chapter 17 and in Matthew chapter 26 is absolutely incredible and amazing because he shows us what to do when we feel those ways. Instead of numbing ourselves or instead of medicating ourselves, instead of transferring these, motion, these emotions onto other people, probably people that we absolutely love, Jesus practices transference. But look, here's how he does it. He transfers the weight of what he's going through over to God. And he does it by way of prayer. And in Matthew 26, look, don't miss this piece, guys. Jesus also tells his closest friends how he's feeling. In verse 38, it says this, Then Jesus said to them, them being his friends, his disciples, and I'm going to paraphrase now. He's saying, here's how I'm feeling. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of grief. And, and, then, and then guess what else he does? He does something else. He models something else amazing to us. He asks for their help. Notice how he says that. Stay here and keep watch with me. He tells them how he's feeling. And he asks them, to stay with him for a while. Now listen, I know that's really hard for some of us to do. But you know, when you humble yourself in that way, you really are following the example of Christ. It's not weak. In fact, it is strong for you to say to some of your Christian friends, dude, I'm overwhelmed right now. It takes courage for you to tell someone who really deeply cares about you, I'm not sure how much longer I can keep going like this. I mean, we're talking about Jesus here, right? This is the Son of God, and yet even the Bible tells us that he says to his disciples, here's how I feel, guys, and here's what I need from you. And if it was okay for Jesus to do that, guess what, then it's okay for you to do that too. Now look, some of you are watching this right now and you have truly felt just so overwhelmed. You felt this way so much that you've even maybe thought about hurting yourself. You know, you've, some may have even considered taking their own life. I just want you to listen to me for a second. If you don't hear anything else, I really want you to hear this. If that is you, God wants you to hear this right now. He is speaking this, these words to you right now. There is hope. There is a point 
to your life. And your life has purpose. Amen, church? And, and you are loved. God wants you to know that he sees you. He sees you. And he knows how you feel. That one night in the garden of Gethsemane, guess what? He felt that way too. So, look, if that's where you are, man, reach out right now. Tell someone you love that you're dealing with some difficult stuff and how you're feeling. And if you don't have someone like that in your life, guess what? If you're watching this at home and you're by yourself, guess what? Reach out to us here. Man, we would love to visit with you. We would love to talk to you. We would love to pray with you. We don't want you to be alone in this season, do we? I mean, we don't want anyone to be alone in this season. And we would be absolutely honored to pray and share and walk life with you. You have a family that loves you right here. See, in John 17, Jesus begins his prayer with one word. It's just, it's just one word, guys. But it tells so much about the kinds of prayers that we're invited to pray to our Heavenly Father in our darkest moments in life. He begins his prayer with this word, Father. Father. And the Gospel of Mark points out that Jesus uses the word Abba here to address God. Now, Abba is the most intimate and most personal word use for God in our Bible. It's like saying dad or daddy. And guess what that means? Because of Christmas, Jesus' dad becomes our dad. We have the same access to him that Christ had to him, and we can call on him in the same way that Christ did because he is a loving dad. He is a committed dad, and he is a dad that wants his children. He is a dad that wants you. Now, you know what else that means? Jesus then becomes our loving, sacrificial, incredible, awesome, caring, wise, beyond earthly wisdom brother. Our confirmation students would explain it to you this way. The Father above us, the Son beside us. Two parts of the triune God of the Trinity. Two of three persons in one. We'll get to the third person in a minute. God the Father, the Father above us, and God the Son, the Son beside us. And now guess what else that means? We have access to his power. The Holy Spirit, guys. The same power that saves, the same power that defeated death, the same power that helped Christ at the Garden of Gethsemane. And the Holy Spirit was given to us to be with us, especially during our Gethsemanes. And look, again, the way that our confirmation crew would explain that to you is the Father above us, Jesus beside us, the Holy Spirit inside us. The Father above us, Jesus beside us, the Holy Spirit inside of us. God is the source, Jesus is the way, and the Holy Spirit is the power. And guess what that is? That's a family. That's a family. In fact, guess who created us in this world? A family. Look, as it says in uh, Genesis 1, verse 26, I read out of the NIV, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds and the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along this ground. But look how he started out. He said, let us, the plural, let us. They were all there. Let us, and because, look, there was and is and us today, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, because of these Three in one, there is family. Because of these three in one, there is relationship with one another. There is community. And because of relationship and community, guess what there is? 
love. And, and that's why Scripture is very true when it says God is love. You can't have family with just one person, right? You can't have relationship and you can't have community and you can't have love if it's just one person. There is the Father, there is the Son, and there is the Holy Spirit, a family. And because of that, because of these three in relationship together, there is love. God is love. And guess what? Because of Christmas, because Christ came, we are invited into his family. We have a good father, guys. And because we have a good father, we have his good son. Can't be a father without having a son. Can't be a son without having a father. And because we have a good father and because we have his good son, we have his power. We have family. So here's what Jesus does. He practices transference. But instead of transferring all of his emotions and feelings out on his disciples, out on the people around him, and I'm not talking about sharing. I'm talking, not talking about venting. And that's absolutely fine. I'm talking about taking it out on them, right? Instead of lashing out in stress to all the people that's around him, he transfers that weight over to God. John 17, it says this, Father, the hour has come, verse 1, glory Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one of you. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. Verse 3. And this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Verse 4. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before this world began. And so we see Jesus praying here, and what he's saying to God is this, bring me into the glory we shared before the earth began. So look, here's the easiest way I think to say this. Jesus is saying, Dad, when you're ready, I'm ready to come home. When you're ready, Dad, I'm ready to come home. But not before you're ready. Home. Home. I mean, that's an interesting concept, isn't it, for us today? I mean, Mom had that sign in her kitchen, you know, just as I'm sure many of you grew up with the same sign in your kitchen. It read, home is where the heart is, right? And you know what I think my mom was really going for? Was to express this thought of home, that it should be a soft place to land where you would feel protected and where you would feel loved. A sanctuary. And see, Jesus is experiencing this full struggle and suffering in his life right now. But guess what he knows? He knows that it's not his home. So when he prays to God as a father, one of the truths that he is acknowledging by saying that is, I'm not home. And the same goes with us today. By praying and starting our prayers with Father, what we're really saying, whether we realize it or not, is we are acknowledging I'm not home yet. See, our home truly is with the Father. And that means that during this life here on earth, when we pray, we're constantly reminded that we're here we're here but we're not home yet and look guys this is a constant theme throughout the entire new testament believers are encouraged with this idea that they're here but here is still not home philippians 3 20 refers to christians as citizens of heaven. And then we see in 1 Peter chapter 2, where Peter is writing to the Christians, he is reminding them that they are temporary residents on this earth, that they're travelers, they're sojourners, that they're, they're not home yet. And, and every time that we pray to God as Father, every time that we cry out to Him, 
as Father about the challenges and the struggles of this world that we face, we are just reminding ourselves that this is only temporary. This isn't home. Well, why is that so important to be reminded of? Well, let me explain it this way. Another Haiti story, sorry. When I lived in Haiti doing mission work, uh, one of my responsibility was one of my responsibilities was to take care of other mission teams that came into the island to do work from other countries, and I had this one group from Duke University staying for two weeks. They were absolutely awesome, and they were full of pre-med undergraduates and nursing students. So much fun. The third night that they were there, about 3 a.m., they all rushed into my room, men, women, all of them, waking me up claiming that a wild man-eating animal had clawed its way into the guise of bunkhouse. Now, I couldn't find my machete. I know that sounds weird, but just in Haiti, you just, you just get a machete and you walk around with the machete. You don't ever really use it. You just kind of walk around with it. But I did manage to grab a flashlight, so off I went to see these guys. Right when I opened the recently vacated bunkhouse-style room, it was staring right at me, guys. It was a rat but not just any kind of rat. I mean, this rat was the size of a German shepherd. It was a huge rat. It looked even bigger in the dark. So as I went into the room alone, by the way, with all the onlookers staring at me from the doorway, the rat charged me. Now remember, this is all in the dark, but it really looked like it was charging me, okay? Now, I couldn't get out of the room because the doorway is blocked by all these kids from Duke University, right? So I ran into the bathroom, and I was going to slam the door. But guess what? I had forgotten the bathroom didn't have a door. So the rat ran after me, and as I screamed, the rat jumped onto the toilet, and then a miracle happened, divine intervention, guys. The rat slipped and fell right into the trash can. Praise God. Perfect. Now, as I bravely carried that rat out of the bathroom, strutting into the view of the audience crowding the doorway, that bag started shaking violently, and it quickly gave way. The rat was loose, and guess what? At this point, every man absolutely for himself. Duke University students, along with one Red Raider graduate, right, were frantically climbing walls and door jams and each other as the, ran, as the rat ran out to live another day. Now, you know, you know what happened next? We all busted into laughter. And then each person started sharing their version of what had just occurred, which made it even more hilarious, guys. And you know why they could laugh and take that moment into this light-hearted, humorous fashion? They could do that because they weren't home. Now, follow me here. That didn't happen at their home. In fact, had that happened at their home, I'm absolutely sure it would not have been funny. But where they were, when it happened, was only temporary for them. They knew they would be soon headed home uh, with an ever-inflating great adventure story that they would probably tell again and again. Do you, do you see what I'm getting at? They knew this was only temporary and that they were going home. Now look, the other groups that came that visited practice this mentality too in some form or fashion when they would be eaten up with mosquito bites or with sand fleas or when they didn't get hot showers or there was no water pressure or, or when the electricity would come and go and come and go when they had tummy trouble you know guess what they did they would talk about home they would talk about home it was their way of saying hey i know that we're here right now but look, man, we only got a few days left. We're not here long. And soon we will be back in the comfort of our home. And that kept them encouraged when some of it was also difficult for them to face. Now, I don't mean, and I didn't intend to trivialize 
the challenges and struggles that some of us are facing right now and dealing with in this particular season of life. You know, so, some might have even taken offense uh, to my analogy, and if, if that has, if that's you, I, I'm, I'm very sorry. You, you know, you may be thinking, are you really comparing what's happening in my world right now, Todd, with a long night in a bad motel? Well, man, I kind of am. And I've used this quote before, but let me just point, point us back to this. Listen to the way that St. Teresa of Avila captured it. She experienced, look, you need to look her up online. Go read about her, okay? She has an incredible life. She experienced incredible loss in her life, and she endured years and years of just pain and sickness and suffering. But towards the end of her life, she said this, In light of heaven, the worst suffering on earth will be seen to be no more serious than one night in an inconvenient motel. I just love that. And, and so at this hour, man, we cry out to our Father, right? And to some degree or another, we feel overwhelmed maybe, and we feel lonely and anxious and afraid, and, and maybe we're super frustrated. But we can't forget, guys. We are here, but we're not home. What God has for us is a beautiful and an incredible place, an incredible home where we'll have all the love and security beyond what we can even imagine in this world. A true sanctuary. And where we are now, it's only temporary. Now, there's one more thing I, I, I don't want you to miss as we wrap up uh, this morning. It's the posture that Jesus takes in John chapter 17. Did you notice it? Before he even begins his prayer, it says this. Jesus looked up to heaven. Jesus looked up to heaven. And look, that's what we want to do together this morning. That's, that's the posture that I want to invite you to, to have in this season. We know in this season where everyone's looking over here and everyone's looking over here left and right, maybe behind us. What we want to do is we want to look up. We want to fix our eyes on God, God. We, God, guys, we want to look up to our Heavenly Father and, and we want to remind ourselves that we're not home yet. And until He calls us home, God wants us to know this, that there is hope and there is a point to our lives. And that your life and my life has absolutely incredible value and purpose. And that you are loved. And that I am loved. God, God wants you to know right now that he sees you. You count. And he knows what you're feeling and what you're going through. This is only temporary. Look. All because Christmas happened. Our loving Father now. And because of our loving Father, our loving family. And because of our loving family, guess what? Our loving home. Join me as we pray, guys. God, I thank you so much, Lord, that we come to you as sons and daughters. And Lord, that you are a Father who loves us, Lord, and you care about us, and, and that you are strong enough, Father, and you are safe enough for us to talk to you about absolutely anything. And if we feel scared, Lord, and if we feel overwhelmed, and if we feel frustrated, and if we feel fearful, God, we can share those emotions with you, Lord, those feelings with you. And so I, I would just pray, God, that this week, each of us would find time every day to get on our knees and to take that posture that your son took to look up to heaven and to begin a prayer with Father. And Father, I pray that as we do that, Lord, that we would know uh, you in a way that is more real than we have ever known you before. And God, I want to pray specifically for all those uh, maybe who, who, who just don't know this about you, God. That this would be the day, Lord, where they would know you as Father 
And they would experience your true family, God. And they would know that, that they have a home. It's because of you, Jesus, that we can know God as the Father, Lord, and that we do have a home. And so we put our faith and we put our belief in you, Lord. God, I also pray that we can know each other more deeply as brothers and sisters this year, Lord. That that model family that you created us, that you came from, that you are in, Lord, that true family, that that would be a model of how we can be family here as well that we could come together, Father, and we could stand together. Lord, we love you. (laughs) We give you all the praise. And we thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy and your love, Father. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Today is Communion Sunday, and so um, for Communion Sunday, I do want to remind you, immediately following the services, and I'll hang out there till about noon today, um, not till about noon, I will hang out there till noon today. I need to watch those estimations, right? Um, uh, that uh, you can come and do drive-in communion, and, and I'll, I'll serve you in the parking lot, and we can, we can pray together and experience some community and some love, and some home right there. And so uh, um, let's, let's go, come together as we bless the elements and, uh, and do the great Thanksgiving. And the slides will be up for you if you want to read along. By the way, if you're not able to join us in the parking lot, that's okay. Listen, you can take whatever you have in your pantry. It can be a potato chip. It can be water. It can be a cracker. You know, it can be a Coke. It can be a Cheeto. And look, God has a great way of transforming those elements into holy sacraments for us if we believe and listen to his word. And so I just want to encourage you. It doesn't have to be bread and cheese, all right? So the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing, church family, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth, In all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And yes, holy are you, Lord, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, God delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on that night, which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, and he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said this, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, And he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, which is Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, Father, and on these gifts of bread and these gifts of wine and make them be for us or, or the gifts of, of, of crackers and Coke or Cheetos or, or chips, Father, at our homes. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ and redeemed by his blood as well. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, God, and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever, ever, ever, evermore, God. Amen.
And now, guys, if you'll join me in prayer. Father, we do thank you that this is your body, Lord, and we do thank you that this represents your blood, Father. And as we come to partake of that, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy and your grace, God, that we may also be poured out, Lord, to our community and to our neighborhood, Father, that we can build family because we have a loving Father. Father, thank you, God, for that, Lord. We love you very much. Thank you for giving us a home. And all of God's people said, amen. This is always. This is the body of Christ that was given for you because of his love for you, that you might not perish but have eternal life and in this world have community and love and grace and forgiveness to have a true loving father to have a true home true community and love This is the blood of Christ that was poured out for you because God knew that this world would not fit for us. And he knew that we would need redemption so that we could join him and be in relationship with him. And because of that, he gave us his very precious sons. So this very precious son so that we could be his son. Christ's blood poured out. Father, we thank you, God, Lord. Father, we thank you for all your blessings and the many things that you have given and sacrificed for us and do each and every day. Now, Father, we ask, Lord, that you turn us, turn us into more like you, God. Thank you for being such a loving Father. Thank you for putting us in such a loving family, God. And thank you for giving us peace and security for giving us a home, Lord. It's in your name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. I'm so glad you guys could be with us. I love you very much. Please praise and worship in this next song. It's an awesome song. Love you guys.
thank you so much for honoring us with your presence today. Remember, our pastor is in the parking lot. If you would like to do drive through communion, he's right out there waiting, and you can just line up your cars and, and come on through. Uh, also remember that January 9th, this next Saturday at 1 o'clock, will be the services of uh, Celebration of Life for Billy Pierce, and those will be live on Facebook if you want to join us. I just want to remind you of something our pastor said this morning, and that is if you are overwhelmed, if you are anxious, just remember that this church family is here for you, and we're here to be with you through whatever you might be going through. Blessings to you and your family this week.